Bibles to Matthew chapter number 1. Matthew chapter number 1. As the weather starts to get colder, right around October, November, then my heart kind of travels south down I-55 and makes its way on down to the Gulf of Mexico. And uh, I start to think about those warmer weathers, walks on the beach. As I've mentioned before, the, that is my favorite place in all of the world and I uh, enjoy taking the walks just down the coastline. I leave my wife and the girls behind and try to get a little bit of alone time while the girls are playing in the sand and doing whatever. And I uh, just spent a few minutes just taking a walk by myself. And I uh, will walk for a little bit of a while, and uh, then I'll make my way back. And uh, one of the things you always notice when you're taking a walk on the beach is you can always tell if someone's walked the path in front of you. And you can see the footprints and the marks of where they went. And as we look throughout the Old Testament, we see the footprints of the Messiah. The signs that point to who the Messiah would be, when he would come, where he would come, and the things that he would do. And it's amazing to me as we read through the New Testament, we find that Instead of knowing the different things about the Messiah, they were caught unaware. They didn't understand. And yet the footprints were there for them to follow the whole time. And over the next three weeks, we are going to look at this series called Footprints of the Messiah. And we're going to look at footprints of his birth this morning. Next week, we'll look at footprints of his childhood. And then we'll look at footprints of his death to see if the Lord Jesus Christ fulfilled these different things that were prophesied throughout the Old Testament. And in Matthew chapter number 1, beginning in verse number 18, the Bible tells us this, Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise, when as his mother Mary was a spouse to Joseph, before they came together she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man, and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privily. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins." Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Then Joseph, being raised from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him, and took unto him his wife, and knew her not till she had brought forth her firstborn son, and he called his name Jesus." Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for the wonderful Word of God that teaches us, guides, and instructs our lives. It has the answer for all of our problems, how to get us out of any situation. And Lord, I pray for those that may be here this morning and they've never looked to you and to your Word for salvation. I pray that they would put their faith and trust in the work of Jesus Christ and be saved today. For Christians, I pray that as we look at the footprints of his birth this morning, we would be encouraged to get into the Word of God and to study it and to know it, that we might flesh it out and be the representation that you have commanded us to be. Pray that you'd bless our time together. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And so we get to this very familiar portion of scripture. This is the time of the year where we begin to think about the Lord Jesus Christ's birth. Uh, he wasn't actually born December 25th. It's believed he was born September uh, 29th, the year 2 uh, BC. And, uh, but we recognize this time through tradition as uh, being the time that Jesus was born. And uh, we began to put up the trees and the lights as we have done here around the auditorium. And have begun to do at home. 
the Christmas carols start playing on the radio, and uh, we get the CDs out and begin to listen to the Christmas music and all those things that we think of for this time of year. And uh, we turn often to Luke chapter number 2 or Matthew chapter number 1 as we have here this morning and uh, begin to think about the, what's called often the Christmas story, uh, the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ. And verse number 18 tells us once again, now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise. And so Matthew's going to kind of tell the story of uh, the Lord Jesus Christ's birth doesn't give us as much information as we find in Luke, but gives us some very important information. Tells us this, when as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. And uh, the scripture is very clear uh, to tell us that uh, Mary and Joseph had not known each other as husband and wife, as the, we use the biblical terms there that we find in verse number 25. They had not yet consummated that relationship physically, and yet Mary was uh, found with child. And the scripture is clear that it, she was not unfaithful to Joseph, but that it was of the Holy Ghost. And so verse number 20 tells us, While he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream. And uh, so uh, Mary had gone to be with her cousin who was also with a child and had come back and uh, after a little while you kind of can't hide the fact most ladies can't hide the fact that they're with child it just it starts to show eventually that secret's going to come out and the right doty eventually the secret's going to come out that we're with child and that uh, so joseph's you know he's He's not foolish. He's not ignorant. He understands that, uh, you know, I haven't been with Mary. So something's going on. She must have been unfaithful. And you can just kind of imagine the heartbreak and what was going through his mind that this woman that he loved and he trusted and felt that she had been unfaithful to him. And so he was going to put her away. A different thing than, than divorce. And uh, that's a, a sermon for another day. But he's going to put her away. And uh, while he's thinking about all these different things and what he's got to do and, and what's happened, it tells us that the angel of the Lord appears unto him in a dream and says to him, look at verse 20, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And so he lets her know she has, she's not been unfaithful. That this is something that the Lord is doing. This is a work that He has done. And uh, it tells us, verse 21, She shall bring forth a son, the angel told Joseph. Thou shalt call his name Jesus. And uh, that name, because the name means Savior. It says He will save His people from their sins. And then it gives us verse number 22, and it's something that we find said often throughout the Gospels. Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet. And you find over and over again written about the Lord Jesus Christ, whether it's about His birth as we're looking at this morning, whether it's about His childhood, whether it's about His death and the different things that would happen even after He died. It was fulfilled, that which was spoken, these different prophecies. And he says the prophecy that was given, verse 23, Behold, a virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son. They shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Turn over to Isaiah chapter number 7. Isaiah chapter number 7. And this is something that we have covered some time ago as we're going through the book of Isaiah verse by verse on Sunday nights. And we won't dig into great detail about the circumstances and what's going on here. I'll just kind of catch some of you up who may not have had the opportunity to be with us. But uh, here, uh, the kingdom was divided. Uh, Judah was the southern kingdom. Israel was the northern kingdom. And Israel had made a pact with Syria, and they were going to go in and uh, were coming together and going to attack the southern kingdom. And so... 
The king of the, su- of, of the southern kingdom, Ahaz, he's a little nervous, he's a little upset as uh, the thought of his country being invaded, especially by those who are supposed to be his brothers. Uh, but it tells us in verse number 10, Moreover the Lord spake again unto Ahaz, saying, and he uses Isaiah the prophet to do so, Ask thee a sign of the Lord thy God. Ask it either in the depth or in the height above. And so one of the things that God told him was, you don't have to worry about this league that they've made. I'll take care of you. I'll protect you. You're all right. And God does something here that he doesn't do very often. He says, you know, ask for a sign. Most of the time we find that the scripture points us we're to have faith. We are to trust in him. And uh, here he says, all right, I want you to ask me for a sign, whether it's in heaven above or whatever it is, you ask me to do it, and I'll do it. And Ahaz, he kind of puts on his little spiritual front here. Ahaz said, I will not ask, neither will I tempt the Lord. Seems kind of spiritual now, doesn't it? Uh, And he said... Hear ye now, O house of David, is it a small thing for you to weary men, but will ye weary my God also? Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. And he goes on to describe uh, this Emmanuel that would come and once again, as, as Matthew chapter number 1 has told us, that name Emmanuel means God with us. That one of the signs is that a virgin is going to conceive and is going to bear a son whose name is God with us. That God is going to come in the flesh through that woman. In Matthew chapter number 1 is that angel is talking to Joseph. Joseph's contemplating, he's thinking about what it is that He's got to do now that he believes Mary had been unfaithful. And the angel comes to him and says, listen, you don't have to fear. You don't have to worry about taking Mary to be your wife. She's not been unfaithful. But this prophecy that had been prophesied hundreds of years ago, that this virgin would conceive, that God would come to dwell with man, is being fulfilled through this child that Mary had. And it tells us that Joseph was obedient, verse 24, to do as the angel of the Lord had bidden him. And he takes unto him his wife and knew her not till she had brought forth her firstborn son and he called his name Jesus. He's obedient to do that which he'd been told to do. The prophecy that had been... uh, foretold of, was now being fulfilled in the Lord Jesus Christ. That this was not Joseph's child. And it's very clear from later on in the New Testament, we'll talk about it next week, that this, everyone knew this was not Joseph's child. It was no man's child. It was a child of the Holy Ghost. And then the story continues in chapter number 2. Now these divisions came along later on. And uh, just to kind of help us to be able to get together and find things quickly. But the story continues and tells us, Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem. And so Luke chapter number 2 kind of sheds some more light on the story as far as Jesus' birth and what had happened. And... um, tells us about the angels and different things that happened and and that came. Uh, But here it tells us that when Jesus was born, a star appeared in the east. And these wise men, when they saw the star in the east, they came and made their way to Jerusalem. Uh, They didn't follow the star, as is often misinterpreted. Uh, They didn't follow the star from the east to Jerusalem. Uh, We'll see what led them in just a minute. But uh, they say in verse number 2, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. And so they make their way on it. Where's the king? Where's the one that has been prophesied about? We've seen his star in the east and we've come that we might worship him. 
And verse number 3 tells us, When Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled in all Jerusalem with him. And uh, there was a lot of unrest and turmoil during this time period. There was the constant threat of a, another empire that would come in, and uh, which these wise men that came were actually from that other empire. And we've talked about that in the past. Uh, but Herod, he's a little upset. He's worried. Someone's going to come and take over his throne. And of course, when uh, that type of leader gets upset, it's going to, that's going to spread throughout the people. And uh, so he's upset. And so he gathers all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, verse 4 tells us. And he demanded of them where Christ should be born. He says, what, what's this prophecy and where is he supposed to be born at? Let's go and find him. If these guys have seen the star, let's go and find them. And one of the things that's interesting to me is the fact that Herod didn't have any idea. Here he's the king. He's the leader. He should have known what the scriptures had to say. But he did not know. And uh, verse 5, they said unto him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet, Now Bethlehem in the land of Judah art not the least among the princes of Judah, for out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. And uh, they quote the prophecy from Micah 5.2 that tells them the fact that the, Lord, uh, that the Messiah would be born in Bethlehem of Judea. Very specific. There was... Uh, a few different Bethlehems, and uh, so it was specific in the fact of which Bethlehem it would be, but they said, this is where he's supposed to be born. And so the prophecy has uh, been fulfilled. The Lord Jesus Christ was born in Bethlehem of Judea, as we read about. And verse 7 tells us this, Then Herod when he had privily called the wise men, inquired of them diligently what time the star appeared. He's trying to figure out how old this child is. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the young child. And when you have found him, bring me word again that I may come and worship him also. When they, heard, when they had heard the king, they departed. And lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them till it came and stood over where the young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. And so here it tells us that uh, when they come out from talking to Herod, this star that they had seen in the east was back. And they rejoiced to see it. If they had been following it for years all the way from the east, when they saw it, they wouldn't have rejoiced. It would have been the star still there. But they see the star that had come back to lead them and guide them to where the child was. You say, well, what is it that led them to Jerusalem? It was the Scriptures. Daniel chapter number 9 gives a prophecy about these 70 weeks. Uh, in the end of January, early February, our next GNBCU class on Thursday nights is going to be on Daniel's 70th week prophecy. But in that prophecy, Daniel was given the countdown to when the Messiah would come. And so they said, when the command to give in, to rebuild Jerusalem comes, that will start down the clock. 69 weeks of seven years. 483 years. And you can start ticking down the clock. It'll be 483 years until that Messiah is cut off. And so they had a clock. They had a countdown. Daniel had given it to them in the east. That's where these people came from that you start and you can mark it off, often like we do with maybe an advent calendar. You know, what we'll do is we'll, 25 days left. Let's open that up, eat the chocolate for that day, and see what it says. Read the verse. <laughs> and so they could count down the days to the time that he would come. You see, they shouldn't have been caught unawares. Herod or anybody else in Israel shouldn't have been caught unaware. It was all written for them right there in the Scripture. All they had to do was study it and know it. And what a sad thing that these men from the East, they were outside of the covenant relationship with God. And yet they had to bring the news, and they knew what the prophecy said, 
better than the king did. And I stop and I think about the different truths and things in the Bible. It really challenges me to what is it that I don't know? What is it that I'm missing out on because I haven't taken time to get down into the Word of God like I'm supposed to? The Scripture tells us we are to study to show ourselves approved unto God. It doesn't say that I'm just supposed to rely on what the pastor teaches me or what this person tells me. No, you as a Christian, I as a Christian have a responsibility for my own walk with the Lord to get into this book for myself. That's what our Eat This Book study was all about earlier in this year. We are to be digging down deep And often throughout the Lord Jesus Christ's life, you find people unaware of what it is, uh, when he was supposed to come, where he was supposed to come, what it is that he was supposed to be doing, when the footprints were all right here throughout the Old Testament. All these different prophecies and all these different things, and yet so many people missed it. Because they didn't know it for themselves. I think of all the people in the world who are looking to some other thing and some other way to save them from their sins. That if I'm just part of a church, if I just, maybe if I'm baptized, if I give enough money, if I do enough good works, that's not what the scripture says. If they would just take time to study it, both Old and New Testament point, that it's through faith that we have our sins forgiven. It's by trusting in the work that the Messiah would come here to do. And we'll take a very close look at that work on December 21st as we look at footprints of his death. But it was all right here. He told them that he's going to be born in Bethlehem of Judah. That's where he's going to be born. Told them the exact time. Daniel chapter number 9 in the prophecy, you can count down the days. 483 years, and they had a 30-day month. So you can count down 433, 483, excuse me, times 360 and get the very countdown of days to when he would be cut off. It was all right there. And yet they missed it. And the challenge for each one of us is what are we missing? What is it that we don't know, we aren't seeing, and we aren't doing because we haven't taken time to dig down and study it out for ourselves? What are the blessings that we're forfeiting? What are the sins that we're not getting victory over because we haven't taken time to hide these words in our hearts? And we just kind of throw it off. Well, that's just the way that I am. That's my personality. That's just who I am. But no. The Bible is very clear that this book was written that we might have victory over sin. It's all right here in front of us. Just like it was all right there in front of them. It's so easy for us to kind of look back on the circumstances and what has been given to us after the fact for them and say, man, they missed it. How could they not see the footprints in the sand? They, They were right there. And yet, we can't see what it is that we're missing. The footprints are in this book for you and for me, too. How we might have a victorious Christian life. How we might live a life that is pleasing to the Lord. How we might have victory over sin. How we might have comfort in sorrow and hope in the midst of difficulty. It's all right here for us. We just have to take time to get to know what it says. And then once we know what it says, we apply it to our lives. They could have been marking it down and counting it down. These men from the east that came, and there wasn't just three of them. That's another thing. There's so much about this story that is just misinterpreted. They were, they were counting down the days. They, they didn't have the whole scripture. But what they had, they study it, they knew it, and they did something with it. They counted down the days and knew, hey, we're getting close. 
this king, this prince, this, he's going to come. The Messiah is going to come. And so when that star appears, it's time. It's time. And we don't know where he's coming, but they use the information they had. Well, if he's going to be a prince, he's going to be a king, certainly he's going to be in the capital. So they make their way to Jerusalem. They go to the kingdom and ask the king, where's the king at? Where's the prince? They don't know exactly the story and what's going on, but they take the information they have and they do something with it. And one of the constant themes that you find throughout Scripture is that light received brings more light. That as you take and do something with the light of Scripture that's been unfolded to you, that God will take His Word like a lamp to your feet Amen. and He'll guide that next step. I may not know what to do 10 years from now, but I know what I'm supposed to be doing right now. And so I take that next step. And God is going to, as I'm obedient to take His Word and act upon it, He's going to continue like a lamp to my feet to reveal what that next step is. But we find that light rejected equals darkness. That if I don't want to follow in the light of what it is he's told me to do, I'm going to turn some other way and go some other way and do some other thing. I'm walking off into the darkness. I don't know what's going on. I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing because I haven't taken the light that's been given to me. And the nation of Israel, they should have known. They had the clock. They had the countdown in front of them. They had the exact place where he was going to be born. They had the different uh, things about who he would be. And they could have been watching and waiting and, and being ready. But they didn't get into it for themselves. It's such a challenge to me. Every time I read this portion of Scripture, I'm challenged. To say, Lord, what is it that I'm not seeing? What is it that I need to know so that I can act upon it and do something with it? And for some that's, that are in here, the scripture that you need is the one that tells you about salvation. That we've all sinned. And because of our sin, we are going to be judged and punished for that sin. But as you read throughout the scripture... The Old Testament foretold of it. The New Testament told the events that happened. That Jesus Christ paid the punishment for you and for me. He took our sin upon Himself and God judged Him for you and for me. And if I will put my faith and trust in what Jesus Christ has done, He says, I'll wash your sins, I'll take them away, and I'll give you the righteousness of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'll give you eternal life rather than eternal death. And for Christians in here, every single person in here is at a different place in their walk with the Lord. Each one of us have a different step that we need to take. What's the next one for you? What's the light that's been given to you that you haven't yet been obedient to do? We'll take that next step. And as you take that next step, God will then reveal what the next one ought to be. So often, we like to, we, we want to jump ahead. We want to know what's going to go on way down in the future. And we want to plan all these different things out. And God says, hold on, let's take this next step first. You get this next step right, and then I'll show you what's next. And once you get that right, then I'll show you what's next there. But it's digging into this word and finding it out for ourselves. And then doing something with it. These wise men, they didn't have the whole picture. They knew some of it. And what they knew, they did something with it. And so you don't have to know the whole Bible. None of us in here know the whole Bible. I, as the pastor, don't know the whole Bible. But we are to take whatever it is that we do know. There's some people in here that know a lot more than me. Some people in here that may not know a whole lot. But whatever it is that you do know, you, you are responsible to do something with it. They didn't have the whole picture, but they, God blessed them because they went and did something with what it is that they had. And so what a challenge to get into the God's Word and study it for ourselves, not just for the information, but to take and do something with it.